Good morning, folks. SDO satellite feed still not working properly. No problem. We've got Proba 2 swap and 171 angstroms. It was a day without much solar activity, but we do have some activity here at Earth. Only sunspot group facing Earth is on the north, but Umbra are small and not currently magnetically complex. The Earth activity is in the solar wind, where the coronal hole has amplified the speed of the plasma stream overnight, driving a minor geomagnetic storm. Expected to be just the first of a couple this week, with the next one driven by the caboose of the larger coronal hole system which is currently facing Earth as that dark opening, and will amplify the stream at Earth again here middle to late this week. Aurora should be solid at that time. Want to quickly give a forward-looking forecast for the southeast, that low cell will be driving major storms tomorrow night. Tuesday, after dumping snow on its northwest convergence line, it will draw from the Gulf of Mexico on its southeast convergence and produce some pretty widespread and strong storms in the evening and overnight hours tomorrow. Eyes on that. Now, all our articles today deal with catastrophism, and we begin with one here showing the peaks of megafauna activities over the last 60,000 years. Interestingly, every peak is either just before or thousands of years after one of the 12,000-year cycle shifts. None of the eight peaks of biosphere abundance occurred during or right after one of those cycles, which is, of course, quite expected given their catastrophe. Many of you know I think one of the scariest volcanic systems on Earth is Campi Flegri in Italy. Excellent chemical and electrical monitoring progress described here to warn of any eruptive phase building, with the added scary note that active structures do exist within. Yesterday we had three videos come out, the morning news at the bottom, then we responded to a couple so-called experts trying to debunk us on climate change, and then we had one on what we expect to be the peak acceleration of the magnetic pole shift, all worth watching. And on that last one, the peak acceleration will almost certainly come during a geomagnetic jerk. Good paper here reinforcing the notion that they tend to be happening every three to four years, and so with the last one being about two to three years ago, we are due to get another jerk in the next year. Important to remember, not all geomagnetic jerks create major or even minor accelerations of the field. The last one didn't. 2017 caused only a minor acceleration, so we'll see how this one goes. Lastly, in the articles, we have a paper that identifies a weakening of the solar magnetic fields, which we've already seen several times. But this time, the note that it is widening the heliospheric current sheet, causing slower solar wind. This direct impact on the sun's current sheet and magnetic fields is related to our impact from the galactic sheet, and the slow solar wind is what we are worried will continue to slow to a point where it's unable to effectively clear the dust and gases from the upper corona, accumulating a shell-like layer that then gets blasted away in the solar micronova. Breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. We greatly appreciate your support. Don't forget your tickets for the Houston event if you live in the area. We'll be there on Sunday for a three-hour event and would love to see you in person. Tickets are linked below the video in the description box, along with our books, playlists, and more. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.